So continuing this part of Lightning Talks where we talk about Apache Software Foundation projects uh, is Alexander Bezubov, who will be talking about visualization of big data. And test it, just hey, hey. Yeah. Can, you, can you hear? Okay. So I think it's a bit different from what Roman has announced. Uh, so. I used to work on visualization for big data, but this particular talk is about tools for large scale collection and analysis of source code repositories. And that's something I've been working on in the last half year, and that's exciting, and even maybe more exciting than visualization part. So my name is Alex, and uh, well, I'm engineer at Sourced and also a committer and PMC at Apache Zeppelin. Sourced is a startup in Madrid that I joined recently. It's very cool, and all the things that we work on there are open source. So uh, and I'm going to talk about some tools that uh, I built and my colleagues built during the daytime job. So, well, we collect a lot of source code, but why? And uh, so it's twofold. One, it's the research material for academia. And two, it's the fuel for data-driven products on top of the source code. And it's kind of rapidly evolving area of uh, building better tooling to write programs. So it's quite exciting. Uh, but first, you need to get the data, and that's what I'm going to talk about. It's open source uh, pipeline that you can use uh, on-premises to collect a lot of Git repositories because well, it's the most popular version control system, and uh, that's the source of truth about source code. And the collection pipeline is pretty standard. Like We've got a crawler, a distributed storage, and a parallel processing. So after you store that, most probably you want to go through that and figure something out. So. We'll briefly go through the tech stack, and uh, what the takeaway of this talk is that if you're interested in large-scale data collection, there are some existing open source tools, and there are some new ones that I wanted to share today. So s things that have black or gray boxes around are the things that we build at source, um, but we're going to go through all the stack one by one, and um, to run the software, well, you need some hardware, and on infrastructure side, we, we have a dedicated cluster, with, which is, I think, kind of called the uh, immutable infrastructure these days. So there's basically uh, machines that are from boot provisioned with CoreOS, and they eventually become a part of a Kubernetes cluster where you can schedule your application on. So it's um, very nice and automated. Um, there's going to be detailed talk about that in Configuration Management Camp on Tuesday in Ghent, if somebody up for learning more details about the infrastructure part. Um, on the collection part, so well, we've got machines, we want to get some Git repositories. So it consists of two parts, uh, getting the URLs to that repositories and then basically cloning them. And uh, well, they, we focus on Git and that's the most popular thing. So you need to talk Git language to be able to do that. Uh, we implemented custom uh, implementation of the Git protocol format and uh, storage format called GoGit. And was a talk about it last year in, it's in, in Go language dev room. It's a pure Go. Uh, implementation, one of the big five implementation of Git. Um, it's very extensible and it's interesting. You can do a lot of things like uh, store things in memory when you want to or add custom protocols or store things in database if you want to. So that's um, something we use for cloning part. Um, and then the two separate programs. One is to find the URLs of the Git repositories and store them in database, and second one to schedule their cloning. Um, this is called the uh, rovers and Borges parts, and um, well, there's hundreds of millions uh, Git repositories, so we want to be space efficient, and there's some nice tricks you can do, like store forks together in single Git repository, because you have an extensible Git uh, library, and that's the concept of rooted repositories depicted in the middle. So basically, the repositories that store history and start with the initial commit to the same hash get stored in the single um, big repository, uh, which is, works really nice. Um, so while you collected URLs and you collected Git repositories, most probably want to store that somewhere, and it's got to be distributed. So on URL part is just uh, a Postgres database. We wrote custom your uh, ORM implementation in Go, which is type safe and quite nice, called Calyx. And uh, for repository side is HDFS, which works very well, uh, but it scales linearly with the number of files in it, so we want to minimize number of files. 
basically how we do it with custom archive format implementation. So every uh, rooted repository end up being in a single uh, file inside database. This is an example of custom archive implementation called SIVA. It's seekable, appendable, and indexed format. Uh, so it's block-based, and uh, this way you can fetch your poster once and then append it after new clones or fetches happen. And it's all stored in um, HDFS. Um, so when, after it gets stored, you want to process it somehow. And, uh, well, uh, Apache Spark is a good way to do batch processing and uh, on a cluster of machines. Spark SQL is is something useful people understand and, and, and uh, know how to do. And we build custom library to expose those Git repositories to the Spark API level. It's uh, called Engine and, um, well, it exposes uh, references, commits, files, and so on in Spark language, um, be that Python or Scala, which is super nice. Um, and it talks through GPC interfaces to more advanced stages of analysis of the source code if you want to do that. Here's an example of uh, usage of that library. I'm not sure if you can see that that's, uh, you can extract with a simple pipeline like that, you express the extraction of references, taking the head uh, reference and then getting all the files and for every file do something uh, like um, detect the language and so on, which is quite concise and really great that both engineers and machine learning people can use that because there is uh, Python and uh, Scala APIs for that. And uh, well, after just iterating through files, most probably want to do some more advanced stuff. And there are two projects on that side that we have built. One is uh, Enri, which is a programming language detector. It's kind of re re rewrite parts of the GitHub linguist. It's the thing in Ruby that GitHub uses. It shows you the distribution of languages on top of your repositories. Uh, one that we use is in Go and uh, is compatible with the linguist and is faster. Um, yeah, basically it's from four to 20 times faster on our measurements than, than original Ruby one. And another one is Project Babelfish, which is a bit different uh, because, well, first it's, uh, it's scalable parser infrastructure. So it wraps native parsers in inside containers that you can schedule across the cluster and that exposes uniform gRPC API. So that way you can extract a lot of uh, information from the source code in very uniform fashion and it has drivers for many different languages and something called universal abstract syntax tree which is a uh, native syntax tree of the language annotated with some language independent things that we might be interested in on the later analysis stages and um, well that's a uh, high level overview and there are some future things that we want to get done for example on kubernetes side uh, having bare metal cluster and persisting storage is not not really easy thing to make on the collection uh, side uh, there's a concept of stage event driven architectures it's a paper published by google i think about how to make a scalable system that dynamically saturate the some resources by having uh, queues in between the stages which is very interesting uh, if you want to do, well, clone 100 million of repositories. And on the processing side, we're looking into adding distributed indexes to speed up Apache Spark queries that we have. Um, and on analysis part, there are advanced things like uh, how do we def abstract syntax tree or how do we extract cross language information from uh, abstract syntax tree, which we're looking at in a Babelfish project. That's it. Any questions? All right. Uh, I was wondering if you're also looking at the readmes when you pull from the repositories, because I think GitHub does a very bad job at figuring out which language is the one that's focused. Yeah, so that's, uh, the question was, do we look at the readmes? Uh, so the thing is, the collection pipeline I described is generic, so you get everything. You get full repositories. On the project that detect language, uh, this does not do anything except what GitHub is already doing, so it's also doing the same job. But there is some research in that area, which is quite cool, uh, how, which comes from natural language processing and machine learning area. Well, how do you tell uh, which language is that? Like basically classify a language based on the source code. And we got pretty good results. It's not inside Enery first, it's more uh, yet, but it's more in the research stage. And I think it has a lot of uh, potential, um, well, hopefully, even to be able to merge upstream in, in, in uh, GitHub implementation so it does a better job. 
But yeah, that's, that's a good one. Any other questions? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you.